As soon as you stepped into the Conjuring house, have you ever yeah. seen the Conjuring movies? Yes. They're actually based on a real house in Rhode Island. I <laughs> almost threw up. So what's interesting about the paranormal and what we've learned the past four years is that it affects people differently. Some people can see stuff, some people claim they're mediums and can communicate more. What's so. the real story behind the Conjuring house? The movie story is like this witch, Bathsheba, or whatever. But the actual story is built on the same grounds the King Philip's War was fought on. The main people that haunt it are like seven dead soldiers that this little girl always kept seeing in the walls. And thus it started manifesting more to the entire family. So this family called the Perrin family bought the place in like 1972 and for 10 years they said they would see these figures walking around like their beds would shake, they would get scratches like and it kept getting worse over the 10 years. They wanted to do like an exorcism of the house because Carolyn Perrin was getting like really bad like she would have things happen to her every single day, she was getting like really rash with everything so she brought in these demonologists to her. Ed and Lorraine Warren. They were doing an exorcism, and to her claim, she was actually thrown like across the entire room and smashed into a wall to where she had injuries. And they were so angry about that that they actually kicked out the uh, demonologist. They punched Ed in the face. Because they thought he was the guy that was like making it worse. When you say they punched him in the face, you mean the ghost punched him Oh, in no, face? no, no, the parent. The, the, dad, the exorcism that he was conducting made it more angry, which in turn hurt his wife. Oh. He was yeah, like, stop doing this. Brought The parent family actually wrote a book about that, and really? they say the Conjuring movies actually don't do it justice of all the things that happen and all the movements and the craziness that happened in that 10 years that they lived there. They say it's like 10 times worse. And so they feel like it was dead soldiers. Well, here's where it gets interesting is they don't know what it is, but they believe it is something more evil or demonic, whatever you believe in, that is like controlling all of these like soldiers and stuff and trapping them. That's the facility I was hunting. And this facility is, you need special access. But people do go out there, as you can see from the graffiti, usually to do stuff that they're not supposed to do. The first thing I came across was a big rock pile with a upside down wooden cross on top and a bunch of red spray painted upside down crosses all over. And you could tell the cross I think was burnt a little bit. Then I found this little doll. As I kind of investigated that doll more, a little red scarlet snake actually came up and wrapped around her neck. I picked up the scarlet snake, and that is the only one that was bleeding out of its anus. There was blood coming out of its beehole, which, you know, it was a little weird to me. And then the night just kind of gets weirder from there. You see the, the, the red lettering in the Latin saying. I drove over it. We later translated it to... Turn around, run, hide, he is watching you. Go further into the complex and there's these big abandoned buildings. I go into the building and then I come to this big room where there's the big pentagram. In the middle of the pentagram, there is a three-legged plastic chair with a blood stain at the bottom of it where you can tell something was killed, sacrificed, whatever. There's three walls. On each wall, there's upside down crosses, Latin sayings, and all kinds of stuff. As I'm kind of walking into the room, that doll from earlier grabbed my leg. I don't know if I kicked it, I didn't see it, but that doll from the rock pile somewhere else, it seemed like it grabbed me. It's that same doll from earlier, cross on its forehead, the one eye cocked over, the other eye messed up. Very, very weird to me. So right next it wasn't there and then it was there? You didn't that's... carry it over there? No, I didn't touch it. Probably. So the same they doll didn't that touch you anything. saw on the rock pile somehow made its way to where you were? Yep. Right next to that doll, there is a saying on the ground that says, the omen will follow, which to me was like the creepiest thing of the whole thing. If you interact with any of this, this spirit's gonna follow you. As we go through, in one of the rooms, there's a sleeping bag with something inside of it, and on the walls, it said, she was only nine, we gave her to the devil, basically talking about sacrificing the child. 
the Adam and Eve video. That's an interesting one. How much of that is agreed upon? That there could be a time where the magnetic poles actually shift? They say that the last one was like 778,000 years ago. But the Adam and Eve story, the theory of that is that it happens in cycles of 6,500 years and that it's a 90 degree flip, but six days later, or on the seventh day, it corrects itself. The and planet flips. It's a planet flip 90 degree, and that because of it, the Earth essentially does a standstill. The sun will be staying in the same spot, causing heating like we've never experienced, and that the wind and the waters continue with their momentum because essentially the wind travels at approximately 1,000 miles an hour at the equator. So the theory is that when that event happens, it's going to be cataclysmic. And here's the wild thing is that In that document, it says continental sized tsunami being two miles high. Well, I showed you the Emikusi volcano in Africa and the Sahara, which is at 11,300 feet that has salt as well as evidence of gastropods, sea life. That's two miles high. Yes. It would make a lot of sense. Like, if you look at the Bible and involving like revelations and it's saying like six uh, days. Six days on the seventh day, yeah. God rested. In that document, it says six days, things start simmering down a bit. Day seven, things are starting over new. And they put me into a psych ward. This black guy in the psych ward is like yelling in this module, you know, like, anybody want to learn how to play chess? I was like, hell yeah, I want to learn how to play chess, right? So I walk over, I sit down with this fool, and he starts showing me how to play chess. But it's a black guy at a black guy table, and I'm a white guy. And all the woods and all the skinheads in there are now against me. My cell pops, and I go to walk to the shower, and I walk past the other cell that pops, which is another skinhead in that room. I go walk past his cell, and it's Mac, right? Now we're fighting, so clean this kid up. They moved me to another module. Now this kid put a kite out. Oh, we gotta get this guy. I looked like a skinhead when I went in. I had no hair, you know? Like, they all start treating me like I'm one of them, but I'm not a fucking skinhead. So this guy come over and he's trying to get me to hide this little shank in my cell. This guy got a big ass swastika tattooed on his face right here. Teardrops, oh, lightning bolts everywhere, you know what I mean? Like, he's trying to get me to hold this, this shank yeah. in my cell. I cannot, not doing this, bro. And he come in my cell, it's on. So now we fighting, take this guy out, right? Just choke him out, hit him with some elbows, and now he's leaking. Dude, you ever hear about what Ben Franklin was doing? What did he do? You never heard that, like, what, he was found in his house? Tons of bodies, bro! What? Ben Franklin, they found tons of bodies! Ben Franklin was a serial killer? No, he was, like, doing some weird shit, dude. Like, like experimenting yeah, with bodies? Yeah, 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 no. yeah. Was Ben Franklin's basement filled with skeleton? Repairs on Franklin's old London house turned up 1,200 pieces of bone from at least 15 people. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> For nearly two decades, Benjamin Franklin lived in London in a house on 36 Craven Street. In 1776, more than 200 years later, 15 bodies were found in the basement, buried in a secret windowless room beneath the garden. In 1998, conservationists were doing repairs on 36 Craven, looking to turn Franklin's old haunt into a museum. From a one meter wide, one meter deep pit, over 1,200 pieces of bone were retrieved. Remnants of more than a dozen bodies, six were children. Forensic investigations showed that the bones dated to Franklin's day. Holy shit. Could you imagine if you're my friend and we live together and I say, Sam, what are you up to? You're like, bro, we got to find out how people work and there's only one way to do it. We got to look at bodies. Whoa, how are you going to do that? We got to find a place where we can legally, secretly look at bodies. Well, I'm going to basement. Okay, so what do we do with the bodies? We're 